Hi there, and welcome to Woman Walking Away. Today we are talking about writing. And you may notice behind me I have a beautiful piece of fabric art created by my mother. Uh, I'm using it um, not only to sort of offset the major shadow I have going on, but also because I thought it would be fun and more interesting than just my plain uh, white wall. So I may in the future be showcasing some artwork uh, behind me, and I will try to link to the creator's information in the description. I want to talk to you today about some of the advice that we get as writers and and how to decide whether or not that's useful to you. Uh, one piece of advice that I always hear is write what you know. And no, I object to this piece of advice so deeply. I think this is how we ended up with a literary canon that is filled with, um, you know, white dudes basically basically masturbating their thoughts uh, onto the page and gaining huge following for being raw and honest when in reality they're just being dickheads. Um, because all they know is how to be a white male writer. So that's all that they write about and it's so boring. Um, I'm so tired of reading the same story over and over and actually I don't read men's writing anymore uh, unless it's something that I'm utterly fascinated by like a topic on, on science or futurism or maybe meditation. So there's very few examples of male authors that I'll actively seek out because I don't think there's anything that, that men say that women don't say better um, and more creatively. So I don't think that we need to write what we know because that's why we, we write from our imaginations. We create. We, we're not just describing reality. We're informing it. So I think this is a little backwards. Um, I think that we need to do research when we're writers. <laughs> I would really encourage uh, writers to have a good handle on the material that they're describing. I'll, I don't think that you need to know everything about it. I think that if something comes up um, and you need information, either you seek that out or you fake it. <laughs> I think there's a lot of really good ways that writers kind of maneuver around giving information that they, they're not fully informed on, and I think that that's okay. The, the, uh, the audience trusts you as the writer to tell them what they need to know. You don't need to know everything in order to tell the story that you need to tell. So if you're only writing about your own experiences or things that you have experience with, um, your, your writing may be very narrow. I know that when I was a younger writer, uh, I went through a period of time where I was essentially agoraphobic, didn't leave my apartment except to go to school. I didn't interact with people. My world was very small um, and I was very depressed and I didn't want to write about that. And I kept getting this advice is write what you know. Um, and I, and I so strongly did not want to immerse myself in another world where I was only talking about depression and hating myself. I wanted to create a world that I didn't know so that maybe I could experience something different than my day-to-day -day depression. And thank goodness I, I took that advice with a huge grain of salt because I ended up writing creative, imaginative worlds and, and borrowing from other worlds. Like fan fiction, I think is a great way to, uh, to practice your, your craft. Um, but I was able to uh, remove myself from the mundanity and sort of mental torture of, of my home life, um, where I was desperately unhappy, and put myself in a world where, where this, the center character, I saw myself in them but I wasn't replicating my own story, so I could see a new world, a new way of doing things. Um, so I think, yeah, there's a, there's a big difference between, you know, bullshitting and straight up making facts up or going against what we know to be facts. So like do your research, but, but also step outside what you do know, because as you create, you explore and you learn and you and you get feedback and 
I op I will often have people read my uh, writing and say, oh, I know about this. And then suddenly I've got another person on my team who I can go to for help when I want to write more about that particular subject. So, um, so branch out. Don't just stick with, with what you know because you don't know enough. We never know enough. Uh, we're always learning. Um, okay, so that's, that's my first tip. Uh, my second one is to find a way to say it differently. For some people this comes very naturally. They, they're able to see the world differently so they describe it differently. I should say that I'm not trying to talk about content as much as I am about style. So I'm, I'm trying to say that, that not to fall back on, on cliches. And if you read your writing and you think this has been said before in, in this exact combination of words, then find a way to rephrase it that's interesting. Use metaphors that are inventive. Uh, use arrangements of language in a way that's manipulating them rather than just uh, recreating them. So this is a this is a difficult skill to learn because that's where the craft is. Like that's the, you can only be a natural so far and then you have to do the work. And I as I'm writing if I think or I've heard that before, that sounds familiar, or that's cliche, or that's tired, um, or it's just boring, it just doesn't, um, it just doesn't appeal, we, my eyes skim over it, I'm not, I'm not catching anything, then I might take a few seconds and just make it a little bit more interesting, and there's a delicate balance there too, because you don't want to just splatter your writing with wildly inventive sentence structure, uh, phrasings, words that you had to use, you know, a thesaurus to find. I'm not really saying that, so I guess this is a little hard to describe, but I think just um, keep your keep your dialogue as human as possible and keep your exposition as fascinating as possible and, um, and get really creative because what you're doing is creating a world and you want to paint a picture that no one has really seen before. So it's okay to get creative in your in your exposition because that's where you need to keep your readers interest anyway. Most people really enjoy and absorb dialogue. Uh, natural dialogue is really uh, hard to write, but it's awesome to read. But in your in your other pieces, in your background, you really want to make sure that you are taking that space to say something new. Uh, my last piece of advice for today, for writers out there, is that you are your own audience. This was another one that I really struggled with. I remember I was in counseling one time and I was trying to talk to my counselor about why I'm so afraid to get my writing out there. And it was, um, it's this like combination of perfectionism and fear of success. So like fear of failure and fear of success at the same time in a way that's really hard to navigate. <laughs> um, that like, if I'm not the very best, why bother doing it at all? Or who's gonna want to read this? It's so niche. Um, it's never gonna get out there, what's the point? And I, and I really battled with that. And for a while I was writing stuff for an audience that I wasn't a part of because I knew I was good at it. I knew I was good at a certain genre, there was a huge demand for that type of writing, and I wrote it because I wanted um, a fan base, or feedback, or um, just attention. But I wanted to know people were reading it, and engaging with it, and, I w and, and I'm glad that I did it because, again, like it honed the, my skills, but I wasn't in love with it, it felt like work. and. Now what I write, although finding an audience for it may be complicated, I don't really care because I'm so in love with my own story and my own characters that writing it is a journey for me. The idea that we're now exploring new territory together to me is, is what it's all about. And I write um, in a novel writing marathon in my town 
and this is my third year coming up. So last year I won honorable mention and it was such an amazing experience. I wrote 60,000 words in 72 hours. Uh, I drank so much coffee. I don't think I ate the whole time. I left the arena that we were writing in one night and it was probably close to midnight or after. And I sat on these rocks by this lake just kind of like proud of myself because I had hit a new record, a word, um, a letter count, word count record that day. Uh, and I was sitting on these rocks and I just wanted a second before I, for, before I went home that was just for me. And I looked up and I saw a shooting star. And I hear the, the frogs going in the, in the lake and um, like a bittern was making noises. <laughs> and the Milky Way was just glaring and then I saw the shooting star and it was so profoundly moving and telling me you are here in the right moment to look up and see this and know you are good and I just felt like this is what I'm supposed to be doing this kind of writing so I'm no longer trying to cast the widest net with my writing I'm trying to connect one-on-one -on -one with women who most need connecting with and what I wrote for the novel writing marathon last year. Um, I'm hoping to release it soon somehow. I'm looking into self-publishing. If anyone has any tips or tricks there, I'd love to hear them. Um, I may just release it for free because I really want it out there. And I was so grateful to be able to write not just what I knew, but what other women knew and what other women experienced and what other women wanted to read about. And I could say it in a way that only I could say it. And I think that's what I mean when I say, say it differently. Say it in a way that only you can say it. Use your words. Use what you know, not to write about, but to write with. Um, and know that if you love your story, your story will be loved. But even if it's just by you, you're important. It's important for you to love your own story that you're creating. So, Thank you for watching um, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want more writing videos, let me know because I really love talking about writing. I really love writing. And if you have any questions about writing, I would be happy to answer them maybe in a, in a later video and we could have a conversation because writing, in a, writing itself is solitary, but releasing your work into the world is an active community. And that is what I'm most interested in right now, is, is a strong community of women. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you decide to subscribe to my channel. I put out videos at least once a week. And you can find me um, on Twitter and check out my website. Uh, the links are all in my um, channel header. And if you have comments, I would love to read them and talk to you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.